In this video, we will talk about the teaching of modern fantasy under child and adolescent literature. Definition and Description Modern fantasy refers to the body of literature in which the events, the settings, or the characters are outside the realm of possibility. A fantasy is a story that cannot happen in the real world, and for this reason, this genre has been called the literature of the fanciful impossible. In these stories, animals talk, inanimate objects come to life, people are giants or tom-sized, imaginary worlds are inhabited, and future worlds are explored, just to name a few of the possibilities. Modern fantasies are written by known authors, and this distinguishes the genre from traditional literature, in which the tales are handed down through the oral tradition and have no known author. Although the events could not happen in real life, modern fantasies often contain truths that help the reader understand today's world. The cycle format, in which one book is linked to another through characters, setting, or both, is especially prevalent in modern fantasy. Elliman, 1987, states, Events in fantasy cycle books are often strung out over three or four volumes. Authors attempt to make each novel self-contained, with varying degrees of success, but usually, readers need the entire series for full impact. The cycle format appeals to readers who become attached to certain characters and then delight in reading the next book in the series. Evaluation and Selection of Modern Fantasy The usual standards for fine fiction must also be met by authors of modern fantasy. Believable and well-rounded characters who develop and change well-constructed plots, well-described settings with internal consistency, a style appropriate to the story, and worthy themes are elements to be expected in all fiction. In addition, the following criteria apply specifically to modern fantasy. Authors of modern fantasy have the challenge of persuading readers to open themselves up to believing that which is contrary to reality, strange, whimsical, or magical, yet has an internal logic and consistency. Sometimes, authors will accomplish this through beginning the story in a familiar and ordinary setting with typical contemporary human beings as characters. A transition is then made from this realistic world to the fantasy world. An example of this literary device is found in C.S. Lewis's The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe, in which the children in the story enter a wardrobe in an old house only to discover that the back of the wardrobe leads into the land of Narnia, a fantasy world with unusual characters. Other fantasies begin in the imagined world but manage through well-described settings and consistent, well-rounded characters to make this new reality believable. Either way, the plot, characters, and setting must be so well-developed that the child reader is able to suspend disbelief and to accept the impossible as real. For a modern fantasy to be truly imaginative, the author must provide a unique setting. In some stories, the setting may move beyond the realistic in both time, moving to the past or future or holding time still, and place, imagined worlds. In other stories, only one of these elements, place or time, will go beyond reality. Moreover, a modern fantasy author's creation must be original. In recent years, partially due to an upsurge of sects whose members refer to themselves as witches, challenges to fantasies for children have increased. Stories with supernatural elements such as magic, Halloween, witches, warlocks, wizards, vampires, and other elements of the occult have been targets of censors. The popular Harry Potter series has stopped the American Library Association's most frequently challenged children's books list in recent years because some individuals and religious communities disprove of the book's focus on wizardry and magic. 
In selecting and recommending stories with these elements, teachers need to be aware of the concern of their students' parents with regard to the supernatural as a topic in books for children. Types of Modern Fantasy In modern fantasy, as in other genres, the distinctions between types are not totally discrete. The types of modern fantasy in the sections that follow are a starting point for thinking about the variety of fantastic stories, motifs, themes, and characters that gifted authors have created. Additional categories could be listed and you will find some stories may fit appropriately in more than one category. Modern Folk Tales Modern folk tales, or literary folk tales, as they are also called, are tales told in a form similar to that of a traditional tale with the accompanying typical elements. Little character description, strong conflict, fast-moving plot with a sudden resolution, vague setting, and in some cases, magical elements. But these modern tales have a known, identifiable author who has written the tale in this form. In other words, the tales do not spring from the cultural heritage of a group of people through the oral tradition, but rather from the mind of one creator. However, this distinction does not matter at all to children who delight in these tales as much as they do in the old folk tales. The tales of Hans Christian Andersen are the earliest and best known of these modern tales. More recently, other authors including Diane Stanley, Bella at Midnight and Rumpelstiltskin's Daughter, and Shannon Hale, Goose Girl and River Secrets, have become known for their modern folktales. Fractured folktales can be defined as traditional folktales with a contemporary twist or a tale told from a new perspective. A humorous example in which the characters of the well-known nursery rhyme run away to become vaudeville stars is The Adventures of the Dish and the Spoon by Minnie Gray. Modern folk tales are an important counterbalance to traditional tales. Many of the traditional tales present an old-fashioned, stereotypical view of male and female characters. Many of the modern tales present more assertive female characters who are clearly in charge of their own destinies. Examples are Book of a Thousand Days by Shannon Hill and Princess Ben by Catherine Gilbert Murdoch. Animal Fantasy Animal fantasies are stories in which animals behave as human beings in that they experience emotions, talk, and have the ability to reason. Usually, the animals in fantasies will and should retain many of their animal characteristics. In the best of these animal fantasies, the author will interpret the animal for the reader in human terms without destroying the animal's integrity or removing it from membership in the animal world. For example, a rabbit character in an animal fantasy will retain her natural abilities of speed and camouflage to outsmart her adversaries. At the same time, however, the author will permit the reader to see human qualities such as caring and love by having the rabbit carry on conversations with family members. Animal fantasies can be read to very young children who enjoy the exciting but reassuring adventures in books. Examples are The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrice Potter and Bad Bear Detectives by Daniel Pinkwater. Books for children in primary grades include somewhat longer stories, often in a humorous vein, such as Beverly Cleary's Mouse Stories, including The Mouse and the Motorcycle, Lynn Janelle's Emmy and the Incredible Shrinking Rat, and The Nine Lives of Aristotle by Dick Kingsmith. Enjoyable animal fantasies for the young reader often have easy-to-follow, 
episodic plots. Fully developed novels of modern fantasy with subtle and complex characterizations in a progressive plot are especially suitable for reading aloud to children in their elementary school years. Charlotte Webb by E.B. White remains a favorite read-aloud book. The Tale of Despero by Kate DeCamillo and I, Jack by Patricia Finney are also popular. A classic book with richly drawn characterization is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, who describes in an artistic detail the life of animal friends along a riverbank. This book features an episodic plot structure but has a challenging style that it is appropriate for intermediate grade students. In A Coyote's in the House by Elmore Leonard, the humorous story of a coyote in Hollywood satirizes the movie industry with a style that will be appreciated by many students aged 10 and older. Orwell's Lock by Richard W. Jennings, a novel with a progressive plot, is also appreciated by intermediate grade students who enjoy reflecting on what separates reality from fantasy. Although the interest in animal fantasy peaks at age 8 or 9, many children and adults continue to enjoy well-written animal fantasies. In animal fantasies, for older readers, an entire animal world is usually created, with all of the relationships among its members that might be found in a novel portraying human behavior. The Amazing Maurice and His Educated Rodents by Terry Pratchett is an example of a complex, fully developed animal fantasy novel for readers in fifth grade through high school. Personified Toys and Objects Stories in which admired objects or beloved toys are brought to life and believed in by a child or adult character in the story are the focus of this type of fantasy. An early classic example of these stories is The Adventure of Pinocchio by Carlo Cagliotti or Carlo Lorenzini, in which a mischievous puppet comes to life, runs away from his maker, and has many exciting and dangerous escapades. In these stories, the object, toy or doll, becomes real to human protagonists and in turn becomes real to the child reader, who has perhaps also imagined the toy coming to life. Close family relationships are also demonstrated in The Doll People and The Meanest Doll in the World by Anne M. Martin and Laura Godwin. Emily Jenkins' Toys Go Out and the Toy Dance Party depict toys who became friends with one another. In Kate DeCamillia's The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, a vain china rabbit learns the power of love in this story suitable for intermediate grade students. Personified toy and object stories appeal to children from preschool through upper elementary grades. Unusual Characters and Strange Situations Some authors approach fantasy through reality but take it beyond reality to the ridiculous or exaggerated. Generally, those stories can be best described as having unusual characters or strange situations. Without doubt, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll is the best known of this type of modern fantasy. Writers of modern fantasy have described a strange situation as a boy sailing across the Atlantic Ocean in a giant peach, James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl, and the daily events of an unlikely school in Wayside School gets a little stranger by Louis Char. Modern fantasy appeals to readers of all ages. 
Sean Tan's The Arrival, a wordless graphic novel, features a hero who leaves his homeland and travels to a bizarre new world where he faces the struggles of being an immigrant, seeks employment, and eventually makes friends in their strange new place. The story is fascinating to students in middle and high school. In, in Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book, a young boy is being raised in a cemetery by its ghostly occupants. The topics of life, death, and the power of family can provoke discussion with intermediate grade students. In Talk Everlasting, Natalie Bobbitt explores the theme of immortality and its consequences, a provocative theme for children and adults. Roads of Little People Some authors have written about worlds inhabited by miniature people who have developed a culture of their own in this world or who lived in another world. In Barb Bentler Ullman's The Fairies of Not Folk Wood, Willa Jane, the protagonist, defends a band of fairies living in the nearby woods who are threatened by humans. In the Dark Ground and the Black Room, the first books of a series by Gillian Cross, and sized people face psychological adventures, fantasies appealing to students aged 11 and older. Stories of little people delight children because they can identify with the indignities foisted on little and powerless people and because the big people in these stories are invariably outdone by the more ingenious little people. Supernatural Events and Mystery Fantasy Many recent fantasies evoke the supernatural. One common form of supernatural literature found in children's books is the ghost story. Some ghost stories intrigue younger children, especially when the topic is treated humorously and reassuringly. The goblins of Hilary Bell's The Goblin Wood eventually became allies of the protagonist. Ghosts in children's books can be fearful threats or helpful protectors, as is the ghost of Cynthia de Felices, the ghost of Fossil Glen, who is seeking revenge for a murder. Many authors write mysteries for children in which the solution is partially supernatural or arrived at with supernatural assistance. Vampire stories are gaining popularity with the success of Stephanie Mayer's vampire novel Twilight in which a teenage girl falls in love at her new school with a handsome but tortured vampire. Witchcraft and other aspects of the occult sometimes play a role in children's fantasy books. Witches are often portrayed as the broom-wielding villains of both traditional and modern tales, such as the Russian stories of Baba Yaga. Halloween and its traditions are also frequently presented in children's stories. An example is Princess Harding's Well Witched, in which three children who steal some coins discover that a witch has endowed the coins with some strange powers. Witchcraft has recently been the focus of criticism because of an upsurge of sex whose members refer to themselves as witches. Also, some parents' groups have attempted to censor children's books featuring witches, Halloween, and other elements of the occult. Magical realism, a blend of fantasy and realism, has the appearance of a work of realism but gradually introduces the fantastic as an integral and necessary part of the story. The fantastic is merged into these stories such as that the distinction between realism and fantasy is blurred, often leaving the reader in an, some doubt as to what is real and what is fantasy. Magical realism, with its origins in Latino literature, has stories with the feel of realism. 
but the magical elements cause them to fall outside of the definition of realistic fiction. Examples are David Almond's works such as Skellig, The Fire Eaters, and Clay, among others. Historical Fantasy Historical fantasy, sometimes called time warp fantasy, is a story in which a present-day protagonist goes back in time to a different era. A contrast between two time periods is shown to readers through the modern-day protagonist's discoveries of an astonishment with earlier customs. Historical fantasies must fully and authentically develop the historical setting, both time and place, just as in Book of Historical Fiction. Mary Hoffman, in Stravaganza, City of Mask, succeeds in producing this type of mixed genre story. Wendy Mass in Eleven Birthdays, and Jeanette Winterson in Tanglewreck also present interesting historical fantasies that will appeal to middle grade students and older. Quest Stories Quest stories are adventure stories with a search motive. The quest may be pursuit of a lofty purpose, such as justice or love, or for a rich reward, such as a magical power or a hidden treasure. Quest stories that are serious in tone are called high fantasy. Many of these novels are set in medieval times and are reminiscent of the search for the Holy Grail. In these high fantasies, an imaginary other world is fully portrayed. The society, its history, family trees, geographic location, population, religion, customs, and traditions. The conflict in these tales usually centers on the struggle between good and evil. The Hobbit, written by J.R.R. Tolkien in 1937, is one of the first of these high fantasies. It retains a cult of followers even today. Because of the greater complexity of these novels, their allure is for children in 5th grade and higher, including adults, of course. Good examples are C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia series, Philip Pulsman's His Dark Materials trilogy, and J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series. Many quest fantasies follow a structure similar to that found in traditional myths and described by Joseph A. Campbell, 1949, as a monomyth. In this structure, sometimes referred to as a hero cycle, the hero starts out in the ordinary world and receives a call to enter a strange, dangerous, supernatural world where he must face daunting trials involving a struggle against external forces and internal temptations. If the hero overcomes these trials, he will receive a precious gift. He then has a choice to return to the ordinary world or to remain in the supernatural world. If he chooses to return, he will face more trials on the return journey. After returning successfully, the hero shares the gift to improve the world. The hero cycle represents a journey of self-discovery and personal growth for the protagonist. Science Fiction and Science Fantasy 
Science fiction is a form of imaginative literature that provides a picture of something that could happen based on real scientific facts and principles. Therefore, story elements in science fiction must have the appearance of scientific plausibility or technical possibility. Hypotheses about the future of humankind and the universe presented in science fiction appear plausible and possible to the reader because settings and events are built on extensions of known technologies and scientific concepts. In novels of science fiction, such topics as mind control, genetic engineering, space technologies, and travel, visitors from outer space, and future political and social systems all seem possible to the readers. For example, in Margaret Peterson's Haddock's novel, Double Identity, genetic engineering and its implications are explored. These novels especially fascinate many young people because many feature characters who must learn to adjust to change and to become new people, two aspects of living that adolescents also experience. In addition, science fiction stories may portray the world or one very much like it that young people will one day inhabit. For this reason, science fiction has sometimes been called futuristic fiction. Science fiction is a type of fiction that you will want to know about because of its growing popularity among children and adolescents. If you are reluctant to read science fiction or have never read it, you may want to start with some books from Nancy Farmer, The House of the Scorpion, Andrew Clements, Things Not Seen, or Lois Lowry, The Giver, Messenger. The distinction between science fiction and science fantasy is not clearly defined or universally accepted. Science fantasy is a popularized type of science fiction in which a scientific explanation, though not necessarily plausible, is offered for imaginative leaps into the unknown. Science fantasy presents a world that often mixes elements of mythology and traditional fantasy with scientific or technological concepts, resulting in a setting that has some scientific basis but never has existed or never could exist. A worthy example is Sylvia Waugh's Earthmorn, in which the protagonist discovers her parents are space aliens. Science fantasy novels, which usually appear in series, appeal to adolescents and young adults, and like many series, are sometimes formulaic and of mixed quality. Modern fantasy has appealed for persons with non-literal minds, who go beyond the letter of a story to its spirit. Children, with their lively imaginations, are especially open to reading fantasies. The many types of topics within this genre Animal fantasies, little people stories, tales of personified toys, mystery fantasies, stories of unusual people and situations, quest tales, science fiction, and so on, offer children a breadth of inspiring and delightful entertainment. Because the level of conceptual difficulty varies considerably in this genre, modern fantasy offers many excellent stories for children from the youngest to the oldest. And that ends this video about modern fantasy and their child and adolescent literature. Please do not forget to like and subscribe on this channel.